In this segment, we're gonna talk about explaining NLP models, and this is gonna kick off a little mini segment on explanations. So this is a big topic in machine learning more broadly, particularly with the rise of deep learning models, because these models have very complex behavior and we wanna be able to understand them. So for example, you know, when we looked at question answering and we saw this example where the model is trying to say who caught a 16 yard pass in this drive um, and it, it you, you know, the model picks the wrong thing here based on the highlights. The answer should be Devin Funches and instead it picks the, uh, you know, the last name Stewart. And so we, we wanna ask, okay, well, why, why did this happen? What can I do to fix it? How do I debug my system? And what does this say about how this system does? But when it's all a big neural net, it's very hard to answer any of these questions, right? We can look at the kinds of errors our model makes and try to get a sense of what confuses it. Um, but that's a very like uh, kind of black box way of studying the model, right? We're treating it as this object, and now we have to look at just how it behaves and try to assess what it's doing based on that it would be much better if the model could explain its behavior and that would give us an idea of how to improve it. So here's another example from Sentiment uh, when we talked about deep averaging networks. And we wanna know, okay, well, why is the model producing these particular uh, predictions, particularly for not bad, which should be positive, but the model's predicting negative. And uh, one thing that IR et al did in their work was they looked at the predictions on each individual token, at least as a way of saying, okay, well, maybe it predicted the movie was not bad because we have two tokens here, not and bad, which individually the model thinks are negative. And so, uh, you know, it's not able to correctly model the compositional relationship between these. So this, it would be useful if we could take our models and generally try to uh, produce an explanation of why they make the decisions they make. And so why, what exactly do we want from explanations and what should they be able to tell us? Uh, so these are some bullets taken from uh, Zach Lipton's uh, paper on the mythos of model interpretability, uh, which kind of outlines some of the factors here and why we really care about explaining our models. And so the first one here is trust. Basically, you know, if there's a model that's making some really kind of screwed up errors, we're probably gonna think, okay, there's something we don't understand here. The, you know, the model is not behaving in any kind of human-like way. And so it's gonna be very hard for us to understand where it's making mistakes and maybe we're not gonna trust it. Whereas if it makes understandable mistakes, like, okay, you know, it picked out this answer and it said that it was for this reason. And as a human, I totally understand that justification. We might be more likely to think that the model is doing something reasonable. Uh, another is a notion of causality. So if a model is explaining its prediction for why it predicted a certain class, why it predicted positive sentiment, then we have a sense that that, that explanation should mean something, right? That basically if you say, I predicted that this was positive because I saw the word good, then if you didn't see the word good, necessarily the model would have predicted negative. Now, if the model says I predicted positive because of the word good, and then there's, you know, you, you remove the word good and in fact remove the whole sentence and it still predicts positive with exactly the same score because instead it was, you know, using some crazy overfit feature about, you know, the number of thes in the first sentence, then that's not a good explanation even though it somehow sounds like a just a good justification because it's not actually telling us what the model's doing. So we want this, this kind of causal relationship between the input and the output that the explanation reveals. Uh, informativeness is a third thing that we might want. Uh, basically, rather than just returning a prediction, the model should also give some other information that, that might be useful. Um, so for example, in medical diagnosis contexts, if you see something like uh, an MRI, you don't just wanna know, okay, the uh, neural network thinks it's glioblastoma. You want to know more information about it because as a doctor, you need to be able to figure out a follow-up course of treatment, what you're gonna do, and just having a kind of course label doesn't actually help. And so in a lot of cases, being able to provide more information 
would actually make the classifier strictly more useful in addition to you know, building trust and giving us an idea of what's going on. And then finally, the, the, the last piece here is fairness. So this relates to trust in that we want to recognize that models are making human-like decisions, but we also want to make sure that these dis decisions aren't discriminating against certain protected classes. And so by you know, having an explanation of where the decision came from, we can make sure that it's based on factors that we think should be considered and not those that we think should uh, you know, basically be ignored or, or set aside. All right, so over the next few segments, we're gonna talk about a few different forms of explanations. So the thing we're not really gonna talk about is so-called transparent models. Now, ideally, we could just train up models that are so simple that we can look at them and understand what they're doing. For example, a decision tree with a relatively small number of nodes in it. This is a model that doesn't really need to be explained because we can just look at it and, and understand what it's doing. But when we have more complex models, we're not gonna be able to look at them and understand them, so we're gonna have several different ways of approximating their behavior or kind of thinking about what they're doing. The first one is called local explanations. So these are going to basically tell us what features in the input led to the decisions of this particular classifier. And this ties in with the causality idea from the previous slide and, and the idea of counterfactuals. If the input were something different, the model should have predicted some different output. And so the reason this is local is because it's reckoning with small perturbations to one particular data point. Can we explain the model's behavior basically in a kind of neighborhood around this data point that we're looking at here? We can also have text-based explanations. So the model should actually be able to give a text description of why it's behaving the way it's behaving. And finally, we can probe our models. So this doesn't provide an explanation per se, but it gives us some idea about the intermediate structure of the computation that's going on. Uh, and so there's a bunch of different things in this vein. Um, we're going to primarily talk about auxiliary tasks when we get there, but these are all ways of understanding, okay, the model can do this and it can't do this, and that gives us a more refined sense of what it's, of, of what it's doing, even though it's not producing an explanation per se. So over the next few segments, we're gonna talk about these different types of explanations, see some examples of them, and try to understand why they can help us build better NLP systems. That's the end of this segment.